And then just like that, my run 2017 challenge came crashing down. I began planning for the latest fundraising adventure in late 2016 and the idea was to try and run 2017 miles in a year and to target a specific race or challenge each month. The year started off quite strongly, running 10k every day in January. By the end of February I'd already three marathons under my belt for the year. Then in March I ran my first ever fell race, the 32 mile Howard Hobble, and for the first time I felt I had definitely bitten off more than I could chew. Despite running numerous marathons and trail marathons before, my fitness wasn't really where I wanted it to be, and the race was quite a humbling experience. It was also in March when I sustained my first long term injury of the year. The seemingly out of nowhere I began experiencing some bad issues with my back. More specifically, my sacroiliac joint. It was painful to walk, to sit, to even lie down, let alone run. It was at the point of the year where I was hoping to be able to ramp up my training for the big months ahead, but instead I found myself sidelined and only really put my trainers on when I had another race to run. There was another setback in April when I had the first race of the year cancelled. So April isn't really gone to plan. Start of the month with a colder dale hike. And then, the day before my birthday, I ran up at the Cape Farm. The plan was this month to run the Three Peaks Fell race, but I was told I wasn't eligible for that. The backup was to run the Drop 50. And that race was coming. I've got tendonitis in my thumb. Something funky's going on with my back, and I'm now going to run 15 kilometers around the After scrambling way. around a bit, I managed to find a race for April, an obstacle course race called the Yorkshire Warrior where, against doctor's orders, I dragged myself around, bad back and all, around this course, for the most part one-handed. In May, I then took the challenge to a whole other level, choosing to celebrate Mental Health Awareness Week by running seven marathons in seven days. And next week, seven marathons in seven days Shane Nicholl, good morning. Have you completely lost the plot? Just hit 10 o'clock. Been at 27 miles. Just finished today's marathon. Seven and a half miles in of Fridays, my fifth marathon. Properly starting to feel tired though. Whether it was willpower or stubbornness or just sheer determination, for seven days I was able to put the injuries, the lack of fitness, and self inflicted heat streak just to one side to run 26.2 miles every day, finishing the week with the Leeds Half Marathon. 180 miles down. Three more miles to go. But the most epic race of the year was still to come in June, where I and about 90 other runners left Meriden at midnight to run as far as we could in 24 hours. By the end of the night, I chose to stop just a few miles short of Sheffield, calling it a day at 78 miles, having been running pretty much non stop for the past 22 hours. And then in July, just as soon as I'd recovered from my long-term back injury, I'd find myself heading to Wales to get my ass handed to me by the Snowdonia Trail Marathon. Whilst I'd probably say the views were almost worth it, it's definitely a race I wouldn't choose to run again without some serious training. But unfortunately, that would be the last race I'd complete for a while, as in August, just three miles in to the long tour of Bradwell. and hit my knee hard on a rock and then begrudgingly after about 14 miles and four hours of hobbling I decided to call it a day. That knee injury 
which then coincided with two weeks bedridden with flu, pretty much destroyed any lingering chance I had of being able to complete the run 2017 challenge. But the final nail in the coffin didn't really come until September when, for the second time that year, I had another race cancelled, but this time with the organisers going into administration and taking my sizeable entry fee with them. With several long-term injuries, illness, multiple races being cancelled, a DNF and just a general ongoing battle with fitness, my year didn't really go to plan. It was a year that I began with much hope and promise. A year with big fundraising plans, but it was ultimately one that just ended in disappointment. Yet in many ways it was, wasn't really a failure. And it could easily be argued that it's one of my successful years of running yet. May's seven marathon in seven days was just one of my greatest achievements, not just in running. The 78 miles I ran in June's escape from Meriden was far, far further than I could ever imagined I'd be able to run. And 2017 also saw me run my 50th official marathon for mind in just the last three years. For 2018, I have a few simple goals. Number one is just to get my fitness back to a level that I'm comfortable with. Towards the end of last year, I was running marathons up to two hours so than my PB. I mean, whilst I don't expect to run sub 3.30 this year, I would definitely like to get back under four hours at some point. In May, I'm also going to run my seven marathons in seven days for Mental Health Awareness Week again, in something that is hopefully going to become a yearly tradition. But this time I'm hoping to get more people involved and just make it a bit of a bigger event. I'm only 20 days into 2018 now and I've already run my first marathon of the year the Home Pier Point 6 hour challenge. And whilst I initially intended to record this race, complete with the usual awkward introduction, after a few laps I soon learnt that if running 8 and a bit laps around a water park was boring me, then not even a few geese could make an interesting video. Throughout the year I'm definitely going to be aiming to train more, and sensibly enter some short distance races before going straight up to the ultras distances. I'm also hoping to find some new interesting races and bring some more videos to this channel, both of races and me talking openly about my depression. It's been about two years now that I've been recording videos for this channel. The idea started when I was looking for ways to try and help my anxiety and because fundraising and raising awareness of depression is such a big issue for me, I thought it gave me a platform to try and reach and help others. So that's definitely something I want to do this year, is to make more use of this channel and get a lot more comfortable sitting in a room by myself talking to a tiny little camera. <laughs>